Right then, welcome back. Back in the poly tunnel, we've got this mount filled. It's a 25 ride on lawnmower. It is a bit of an old girl, this one. It's come in because the lady says it hasn't run for a couple of years. She went and put some petrol in it. It didn't want to fire, and then the petrol just disappeared out of the tank. So we've obviously got a leak or some issue there. And she says once she puts it in drive, uh, the belt seems to slip. So we need to have a look under there, see what's going on with the belt and all that. I've just sprayed some easy start in it just to see if it was worth us going ahead and have a look at this mower and it did fire up so we are going to proceed now and what we're going to do first of all is we'll give it a clean up and we'll take a little look around it and then we'll get started right so the story is this lady got given this mower for nothing she has a big um, bit of land where she has some horses and all that and as you can see it's got the solid plastic wheels on the front but they are uh, seen that day now as you can see they're all cracking and all that so that's the end of them the other one's doing the same on the front. The rears are actually inflated tyres, but again, they've been on there some years and they they are perishing and cracking now. The mower itself is all complete. I say it's just been sat in her barn for the last two years because she couldn't get it going. So it's all there. I did stick my head in the tank. I don't know if you can see the filter there, but that is totally clogged up. So it is bone dry as well. So. The petrol's disappeared somewhere, whether it's a crack in the a tank or it was leaking through, going through to the carbon, getting a leak out of there. So I don't know yet. We've not investigated. As you can see, it's really gummed up there, fit with grease. So I say I will clean it up because I don't like working on the dirty engines. But the actual deck itself is solid. They normally rot out these things. So it has been dry stored, I'll say. And so it's the Mountfield 725, so it's all good, it does fire. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to give it a bit of a clean down. I've got some of this old fuel here, look. This was out for the Thundercat um, tank, if you remember rightly, look. So I'll just uh, pour the top bit of petrol out into a cup. It still smells, so it's still clean. It's uh, just full of crap at the bottom, so. But yeah, I'm going to get this cleaned down. Slow it down with the airline and uh, I'll come back to you when we're going to start stripping this engine down. Take the carb off, clean that tank out, have a look at the airfield and give it a bit of a service. And then we'll have a maybe look at the belt underneath, see what's going on there. If it needs a belt or we can adjust it, I don't know yet. It's my first time working on one of these. I've had a couple in the past that I've bought to sell, but I've never actually uh, done anything with a belt. So it's new to me again. Same with the cylinder motors last week. So let's waffle, let's get cleaning. Well, I'll give it a little bit of a clean up. It is really thick with grease on there. It could do with a proper going over, but I just wanted to get all the surface stuff off. So what we're going to do now, just going to whip the plug out, see what that's like. We'll take the air filter off. It's not too bad. A little bit black. And it's a Bosch plug. So I'm just going to take this air box off now. And that is two flathead screws. So one there. And one there. Alright, so we'll have a look at this air filter. No, it doesn't look too bad. Oh, it's a double filter thing. It doesn't look too bad, actually. That'll clean up and go again, that one, I think. But anyway... So we'll just leave that there for now. We'll just bring you in the carb here. I think what we're going to do is we'll have this carb off and we'll take a look in the bow underneath and we'll probably uh, drop this one in the ultrasonic cleaner depending what it looks like inside but I think that's the way we're going to go with it. So I'm just going to get my tools now, see how this comes off because I've never done one of these before. We'll probably take out two screws here they look like a 10 mil they're, the, they're like a 10 mil or a cross head so it'll probably be uh, a driver we get in there because i don't think you'll get the socket under there unless we've got a spanner so let me just get that off and then we'll have a look at this carb right so i've got them two bolts out i've just pulled the fuel line off and uh you won't be able to see much here but there is uh little breather there which we can take off 
once I've got all this off, I will show you it. So that's two strings there. Well, how does that kind of the throttle there? So we need to unbolt that. That's a little. Right, so I just had a little 8mm there just to disconnect the throttle uh, arm. And now I've just got to get these springs out, which is easier said than done when you're working in a tight space like this. Fires. That's the bottom linkage out. And then we should be able to pull that one. There's some old fuel there coming out. Right there, so there's the old carburetor. There's a couple of linkage arms there to take out with a spring on. The gasket is in one piece, but we can always make a new one of them with a bit of gasket paper. So I'll just take you in there. That's what it's like. Two, your two bolts there. Uh, you've got your top and lower arm there. What we'll probably do now is uh, we'll head into the log cabin and get the ultrasonic cleaners going. Also, I've got my microphones back, so I hope this is sounding a lot better than previous videos. Rogue just sent me out a new microphone set. They don't mess about replacing them. They just get rid and send you out new ones. So it has, that was on warranty, so you get a, I think it's a, uh, a year's warranty with that so it's quite handy I've got about two two to three months left on warranty with this so it happened in the right time so they did replace it so let's let's get into the log cabin and uh, we'll get that old sonic cleaner set. Right then, so we've got a 13 mil spanner as you can see someone's been in here before because that bolt's all chewed or that nut rather is all uh, chewed up I know a few people comment on my last video, the cylinder mower, I kept calling the nut a bolt and uh, it upset a couple of people so you have to uh, live with that, we're not all perfect. So there we go, look at the state of that in there. All that corrosion and rust and that is actually all over the float as well. What we'll do Pull that float pin out first and get a set of uh, pliers. We'll just pull that pin out, put that there. Let's have a look at the needle. Needle looks alright to be fair. All looks alright down there. Let's take this jet out. Right. That's got it. I say someone has been here before because you could tell by the bottom of that um, nut there or bolt. We are pretty clear through the holes there. You can see through them, but as you can see, we have got a bit of uh, crack. Crack. We've got a bit of crap around there. You can see it, see it just at the end there at the bottom, bit of crap. That should still be working fine. So we have got daylight again through these as well. So I just need to take this rubber seal out because I haven't got another one of these and I don't want to be dropping that in the ultrasonic cleaner, see? All right, so we've got that out. I mean, in an ideal world, you would replace that. Yeah, but the lady that owns this ride on mower, she doesn't really want to spend a lot of money on it at all. She just wants it to hack around in a, a field. So it's going to take a bit of a battering. And uh, I say she's not wanting to spend nothing on it really. So we're just getting it going. She's going to be paying to us to get it going and working. She's not even putting new tyres on it. And you saw the state of them wheels. There's a little washer there. Yeah, so. All this will just come out. So 
So what we're going to do, so I've just got some of my um, ultrasonic cleaning solution in here and I'm just going to drop the smaller parts in there. So I'll stick that in the corner there. I do normally have a smaller cup in this but Jimmy seems to have uh, used them on me. I've had hundreds in it but I can't see them. So we'll drop all this in. So as you can see, you've got all that in there. We'll just set this to uh, start. Right then, so as you can see, I've got it all back out of the ultrasonic cleaner now. You can see the water is filthy from that carb. And as you can see from the jets, all that crap actually come out of them. Even though they look clear, we've got all that out. From the float, from the, that come off of the float and them uh, jets. So I've given it a blow down with the airline now. It looks a lot better. I don't know if you remember, this was actually black when it went in this carb. It looked like someone had painted it. So it's come out now all silver. The bowl looks a hell of a lot better than it did. That's just um, no rough bits in there at all now. So what we'll do now is we'll get this put back together. Well, because getting that is well pressed. So I say you should really change that, but the leg don't want to do it. So we'll drop that in there. And this was wound right in these. So just get a good grip on it. Pass that one back in. Wind it back in home. There we go. So we can stick our float back on its carrier. So just get your pin back in. So the float's actually working. So that's good. So we can stick our bowl back on. A little washer. Make sure that's all clear. Sitting on there nicely. Ain't got to go too mad with this. There we go. So that's the carb fully uh, cleaned. This goes on here. I took that off. I didn't want to put that in the ultrasonic cleaner. That we got that there. That just clips back on like that. And I've still got the original gasket. It seems all right to be fair, so I probably won't mess about with that. And that will just go on there like that. And that's one car fully serviced. So we can go back outside now and get this put back onto the mower. And then um, we'll take the tank off and give that a good clean out. Because I don't want none of that crap going back in here. Right then, so. Just going to get this old uh, carby back together. See the top spring there. I'll like say, this is the best angle I can get you in, I'm afraid. So you have to bear with me on that. Push your breather pipe back on. Right there, so we'll get our gasket now. Right, and as you can see, we're fully uh, connected back up now. It's all working as it should. As you can see, it's operating there from the gear stick up the top. So what we'll do now is we'll head round and take this fuel tank off. And by the looks of it, look like eight mils, so we'll undo them and hopefully they should just spring open and we should be able to slide this tank out and we'll give it a good flush through. But right at the bottom there is the filter and it's covered in crap. 
So I'm going to go flush this tank out and I'll come back and we'll refit it and hopefully we'll get a bit of fuel down this um, mower and it should fire up hopefully. Right, so I've given the old uh, tank a good uh, sw swoosh out with the uh, some cleaner and I've also blown the airline down there and as you can see, you can see the silver mesh filter now so that's all good. Also, I've put a new clip on here. I uh, to pinch out the workshop. So you'll probably say something when you see that. And uh, that firmed it right up because the other one it was sliding off. So I think that might have been the issue where the fuel was going. So that goes down there like that. There we go, like that. And then we've got the other side. Again, it slots under the metal bracket. So I'm just going to whiz these back on and uh, I'll come back to you once we've got that sorted. The petrol hose back on. I've given the old spark plug a clean up. I say the woman don't want to spend a lot on this so we're just using what we've got basically. Just cleaning what we've got. So the only thing she might have to spend out on is a belt if this one's um, a bit stretched. Well, that's that. I won't put that on yet because we need to get it off the table. I did blow the air filter out. So that goes on there like that. Start that off. And that sits in there. Put that down straight. Screwdriver. And I'm hoping bit of fresh fuel in it she should fire up and if she does we're halfway there it's just a matter of uh, having a look at the belt underneath and see what the crack is with that so I'm just gonna lower her down now and we'll get a bit of petrol in there and take her outside and see if we can get her to fire up right so we're outside now all the hard work's been done look who turns up So I don't run over it. So we'll make him happy now. We'll let him know we're going to use his petrol. What do you think about that? You always do anyway. Unbelievable. Remember, we've got an empty car now, so it might take a few pulls. that way right and so as you see it went the uh, first pull there had a little spin up the garden it only pulls you in first gear second gear and third gear the belt slips so we need to get under there and have a look but at least we've got it running on its own steam
right there, so we're just going to jack this back end up because we need to have a look at these belts because it looks like the drive belt's slipping, so we're just going to get this up in the air. Easy as that. So I think I've just got to undo this uh, tension spring here. Off this pulley. So we can get the belt through this bracket maybe. There we go. There we go. Got it. Yeah, as you can see all that the teeth are worn. The teeth are non-existent on it, aren't they? So that's what we're hoping is gonna be the problem. So we have to look for one of them online. <laughs> So that main pulley, the bottom one does the the deck itself, which is that big belt what Gary's got there. And the little pulley at the top is the one that joins via that belt up to the gearbox pulley. So the smaller one that you can see there is the jockey wheel, which uh, tensions the belt. And the big pulley at the top there is right underneath the gearbox. And that provides the drive to the, uh, the wheels via a chain-driven gearbox output shaft, which if I come up here... So that big pulley underneath is driving this gearbox and then the output shaft of the gearbox is what you see latching onto the wheel under there via that. So that little belt drives all that from the main shaft of the engine there, the output shaft. Right, so we're going to lower this deck down now by pulling the handle forward. Oh no, that's not, that's not that a low. Right. That's the tensioner, isn't it? That might yeah, That's can you the, lower it down as well though? Yeah, I can lower it down with this lever here. So if I bring that lever forward, out and down, as you can probably see, the deck goes down. That's it in its bottom position. That's better. So you can just take that belt off now by the looks of it. What's the pulley seized? No, it's not seized, it's just tight getting the belt through. All right. Through that bracket. The deck itself has not got any holes in it at all, is it? No, it's solid deck, isn't it? So that seems to be okay. And the pulleys on the uh, top of the deck seem to be in order. And the bearings on the shaft spin absolutely lovely. So although it's an old mower, the uh, essential parts for the drive seem to be all in order. Right then, so that's a, a wrap for this video. We need to get two new drive belts. I just messaged the woman and confirmed that she wants to go ahead with that because she don't want to spend a lot on it. So there may be a part two with new belts and refitting them. What do you reckon? Collaboration with Retro Resale, that's what I reckon. All my tools and knowledge and you to do the donkey work. Walla Wally. Anyway, until next time, we'll see you about.